Hi, it's science o'clock. It's time to bring this chemistry quiz topic thing uh, unit to a close um, with some questions. Um, so what I've done is I've taken questions from the book that we normally use in class uh, and I've split them up onto different slides. Uh, I'm just going to talk you through some of them just to help you answer. Now there's a lot of questions here. Uh, if I do this in class uh, for a one hour class, um, one or two people might get to the end of the questions. Most people won't. Uh, most people will get um, probably just slightly over halfway. So what you should be doing is you should be trying to do as much as you can, obviously, but if you're finding it's taking you over an hour, and uh, maybe it's a time to stop. No, I wouldn't expect everyone to be able to do this. Um, but saying that, um, don't, don't be lazy. You know, don't just think oh, I've done two questions, that's enough. You should get at least halfway. And I'm also, I'm not asking you to write anything out, uh, not write the question out, just write the answers down. You'll see as we go through. There's no starter because it's all questions, okay? So, no, come on. Uh, next slide. Check. There we go. So, nice and simple, first one. Uh, we're talking about, uh, it says copy and complete. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to write one A, B, C, D, and then you write the word that's correct. Copy and complete each of these sentences about group one elements, including only the correct word in each pair, shown in bold. A, group one elements are all metal or non-metal. So you would just write one A and either metal or non-metal. Don't write both. And be brave, have a go. Don't just be rubbish and leave them, write them both. Do it. They react with water to form hydrogen or oxygen and an acidic or alkaline solution. So just choose one of those uh, two pairs, either hydrogen and oxygen, and then acid or alkaline. C, group one elements are, are they poor conductors or good conductors of electricity? Just write the answer. And the atoms in group one element lose electrons, or do they gain electrons when they react with non-metal elements? Just write down the correct answer. Okay, let's go to the next one. The table shows information about group one elements. And here we have, uh, going across uh, the top row, the atomic number, the melting point, the boiling point, the density and the relative hardness. Uh, notice uh, melting point, boiling point and density all have units, degree C or grams per decimeter cubed. Atomic number, it's just a number and relative hardness is also just a number. So the bigger the number, the more hard, harder the substance. Um, and we've got lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. So in the periodic table, we're going down the periodic table for group one. And you can see as we go down the periodic table for group one, the atomic number gets bigger. Um, the melting point gets smaller. The boiling point gets smaller. The density goes up. The relative hardness is going down. But there are three gaps. And A says, use your knowledge of the trends of physical properties of group one uh, to predict the missing values for rubidium. So those three empty boxes for rubidium, what do you think the boiling point will be? Looking at what's above and what's below. What do you think the density, density will be? Looking at what's above and what's below. What do you think the hardness will be? B, I, write down the names of group one elements that will be solid, will be in the solid state at 30 degrees. At 30 degrees, which of those elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, will be solid? You just write the name of the elements. Which will be solid at 100 degrees? So there'll be some that are the same, some that are different. Write down the electronic structure of lithium, sodium, and potassium. Remember, you write down electronic structures by the number. So, for example, 28888. Eight, 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 eight. That's a bad, that's not real. You know, that's not a real one. But... That's how you'd write it down. So write down the electronic structure of lithium, then sodium, and then potassium. You could use your periodic table to help you. Explain in terms of electron why group one metal elements have similar chemical properties. We've done this before. Okay, next one. Again, exactly the same as number one. I don't expect you to write out the whole thing. Just write out the right, correct words. Copy and complete the sentences. For group seven elements, including only the correct word. Apart from acetine, the group seven metals are all, are the group seven elements all metals or non-metals? 
the reactivity of group seven elements, does it increase going down the group or does it decrease going down the group? The melting point of group seven increases or decreases. So you're just writing one of those bold answers. And the atoms in group seven lose electrons when they react or do they gain electrons when they react? Again, you just write three A, then the correct word. Three B, then the correct word. Three C, then the correct word. And three D, then the correct word. Sorry, my cat's being noisy. I just broke his head. Uh, group seven elements react with ions in solutions. A student carried out an experiment in which they added solutions of chlorine, bromine, or iodine to solutions of sodium chloride, sodium bromide, or sodium iodide. Copy and complete the table by adding a tick in each box where you would expect to see a reaction. You've done this in a previous lesson, so copy that table down. It's not too much, and then put a tick uh, where there is a reaction. Notice, for example, I'll give you a little hint. Sodium chloride and chlorine, sodium bromide and bromine, sodium iodide and iodine, there's no reaction because they're the same. But you can use that to help you remember where there is a reaction and when there isn't a reaction. <clears throat> then write down a balanced equation to model the reaction between fluorine, fluor, ugh, fluorine and sodium chloride. Uh, state symbols are not needed. I would start by doing the word equation. Then you, so you say fluorine plus sodium chloride arrow what happens hint there is a reaction something does happen there is a change there is a displacement so what happens uh, and then can you convert that into um symbols uh number five we definitely did this in the lesson explain in terms of electronic structure why group zero uh, elements are unreactive Number six, a more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from its oxide. Table three shows the results of a similar experiment with four metals, A, B, C, and D. A tick shows where a reaction happened. Um, use the results to place the metals in order of de decreasing reactivity. So if there's a tick, that means a metal was displaced. So the row that has most ticks will probably indicate that that's a not a very reactive metal because if every single time you put something with it, it got kicked out, then it's not very reactive. The column that has no ticks is going to be um, a very reactive metal because every time you put them together, it was still too strong. So um, those two things should help you and you can work the rest out and then explain which metal A, B, C, D, E, no E, A, B, C, D form positive ions the most easily. There we go. So we're just past the halfway. If you've managed to do all those, brilliant. Here's some more, keep going. I believe in you. Question one of the revision section. Elements may exist in different physical states. Which row about group one, zero and seven is correct? So you just write one A, one B, one C or one D. A, group one are all solid. Um, group seven, all solid, and group zero, all gas. B, group one, some in liquid, some in solid, some in gas. C, some in liquid, some in gas, all in gas. Or D, all in solid, some in gas, and all in gas. Uh, you just have to pick the correct one. For example, you know that um, group seven has solid, liquid, and gas. So, hint, A is wrong, because there's no... Um, you can't have chlorine and chlorine in solid at room temperature, okay? So, use that information. Number two, what happens when group elements are, group one elements are added to water? Uh, again, you just pick the correct one. They all float and hydrogen gas and alkaline solutions are produced. Some float, carbon dioxide gas and alkaline solutions are produced. Some float and hydrogen gas and alkaline solutions are produced. Or some float, and hydrogen gas and acidic solutions are produced. Only one of those is correct. You can use the information from previous questions to help. Elements in group one react with elements in group seven. Which ionic compounds are produced in these reactions? Uh, which of these elements would you ever expect to react most vigorously? Okay, so is it lithium and fluorine the most vigorous? Lithium and iodine? Potassium and iodine? Or potassium and fluorine? Which are the most reactive of group one? Which is the most reactive of group seven? 
you put them together, which is going to be the most reactive overall? Uh, group 7 shows the atomic radius for some elements. Use graph paper, plot a line graph for these data. Show atomic number on the horizontal axis and atomic radius on the vertical axis. Not smart. Just do an Excel. Draw a line of best fit. And you can use that to predict uh, the atomic radius for potassium and francium. So just do that in Excel. Cheat. Not cheating. Think smart. <coughs> elements in group one become more reactive down the group, but elements in group seven become less reactive down the group. The elements in group zero are unreactive. Explain these observations in terms of electronic structure. This is a great type of exam question. If you could do this question, you're going to be in a really strong place for when the exams happen uh, for you next year. Maybe not for next year. Uh, so uh, six marks. Uh, describe their electronic structure, how it makes them more reactive, less reactive. And this last one is a really high question. Um, again, another really exam style question. As student investigates the reactions of some metals with dilute hydrochloric acid, Predict and explain what the student will observe when he adds zinc to dilute hydrochloric acid and include a balanced symbol equation in your answer. This kind of links to the previous lesson. Write a half equation to model what happens when a student adds magnesium to dilute hydrochloric acid. Remember, a half equation is just showing what's happening to the electrons, to when something goes from being an atom to an ion or an ion to an atom. So uh, in this one, I would talk about the magnesium half equation, magnesium starts off as a magnesium atom, and then it becomes a magnesium ion half equation. Uh, use your half equation to explain whether magnesium is oxidized or reduced. Remember, oil rig. When magnesium reacts more vigorously with zinc uh, than with dilute hydrochloric acid, copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Explain these observations. That's about the reactivity series and where they are. That's it. Okay, you are gonna do really well. I believe in you. Love you.